Hello, hello, hello. Right, today's video, I'm gonna show you what I look for when I'm buying a secondhand old Casio. And I will show you what to look out for when it comes to condition, um, whether it's real or fake, and what little things to look out for. Most of you may know this if you're an avid Casio collector, but if you're new to the scene and you interested and this you're gonna find this quite helpful so look there's the first thing let's go start with these two watches here the first thing you want to look out for is is it real now these both here look exactly the same to the untrained eye but what makes it look what one of them is real one of them is fake can you guess which one it is before i point it out to you and it's this look when you tilt, so Casio make really good LCDs, high quality. Now, when you turn this to the side here, you can still see the numbers quite clearly. See there? You still see that, you still make out the time. Now, when you get to the fake and you twist it, you can no longer tell the time. And I've only twisted it just a tiny bit. You can no longer tell the time. You see all the numbers are highlighted now. Now you cannot tell the time at all. That's what's a bad LCD, which means it's a fake. So that's a telltale sign. In the late 80s, they made a load of fakes. So you really got to watch what you're buying because loads of them came over and they still are. But in the 80s, it was flooded. You can also see the LCD here is slightly darker to this one but the functionality is exactly the same oh, by the way i think that this light is it green and this light is green as well yeah so that's that's fine another telltale sign is when you swap them over it's the screw now this is gonna this is gonna be for decades and decades i'm just gonna slip give me this little screwdriver decades has been going on for so uh, this is the fake one and here is the round screw and it's got the positive inside here because it's a phillips head now this casio didn't make them like this they made them like this they made the positive but on one of the lines it goes right the way through the screw can you see that the line goes right the way through and this one it doesn't it just stops just like a normal screw would just drop i've got two here i wonder if we just put them both together and you can have a proper look you probably can't but here is the real Casio here is the fake you see the positive line goes all the way through but it doesn't go right through the other side so it's only one side so that's one one way of noticing them another way is um, so that's the fake one is the real one that's on the F91 on eBay there is a ton of these that are absolutely fake and people are selling them for three four pounds free postage stay away from them the real one is 10 quid in english money so that's one way so that's one sign to look out for another one is when i'm buying a second hand casio i'll look out for condition so this one here is in really bad condition it's still usable but to a collector it's terrible condition and it really devalues the watch so let me show you against this one here so both watches are identical. And sometimes when you're buying off eBay, it's very difficult to tell by the pictures. But I'll tell you what I look out for. So on a plastic watch, I look out for the lines. So Casio watches make nice lines that are sharp. So this one here has hardly been, re been used, even though they're both the same time as how old they are. Both see the lines let me just get my pen 
Where is that? This one here. So when they're used, because you've got your sleeve and all that, it rubs onto this part here, mostly. And that's the first bit that wears out. And you see here, the plastic casing is all nice and sharp lines. As soon as you start seeing roundness here, or a shiny mark, it means the watch is being used more and more and more. Like this one here is heavily being used. So that's one thing to look out for. What else can we look out for? Also, the screen. Now, these are acrylic screens. So this one here, you see the amount of scratches on it? This has got nothing on it. But the acrylic screen is not much of a problem because, let me just dig it out of my drawer. You can use Polywatch. I don't know if you've heard of Polywatch, but this cleans the screen. So this is... This will take a lot of work to take all the marks out of here because it's very, very deep. Let me zoom in. That's better, isn't it? <laughs> Should have done that earlier. See the sharpness on the lines here? As a, This is exactly the same watch, by the way. And see how roundy these are. This was once like this, but because it's been used and it's only plastic resin, it wears off pretty quick. So that's one way, one thing to look out for. By the way, they didn't make any fakes of these type of watches. It's the really simple watches that there was a lot of fakes of. Another thing to look out for is a disc keypads on Casio, especially the 30, 40 years old stuff. Keypads wear off so much. Another thing to look out for is the buttons. The, the problem with the buttons is, so when they, were, when they were brand new, they had a plastic thing over here. But so just take the plastic off and it's still in the box. It doesn't take much for the button just to have a little few marks on them. So don't worry too much about that because the poly watch can take all that off. But make sure you don't get the poly watch paste on the plastic resin because it will start making it shiny. Um, yeah. So that's one thing to look out for is the lines and scratches are not too important. This is past it. You couldn't clean this up and make it look like this unless you put, pff, there'd be nothing left of the screen once you clean it. It would take a whole paste as well to clean it. So try and, I mean, this is used too much. So stay, from, stay away from a watch like this unless you just want it, unless you just want to own um, a CMD40 and you're not really fussed, you just want to wear on your wrist to work and you've got physical work, then of course, wear that. You wouldn't want to wear this because you're going to ruin it. Or buy both. Special occasions and one for work. So um, that's one, one thing to look out for. Now another thing, that's on the plastic ones. Now on the chrome watches, so Casio made a lot of these in the old days. This is a metal case. Now, I have no idea why, but 99.% of them, the metal case affected the screen. And a lot of metal cases you see in the 80s, nearly all of them have got bleeds on the screen, depending on how they looked after it. I don't know whether they never had a battery in it and that preserved the screen, or if you had the battery in it for many many years then that affected the screen to go to bleed through so that's one thing to look out for and to look out for the blades you just got to zoom into the, to the screen and you look at the start from the corners first and the bleed is see the little black dot there well that's the the ink or something behind the screen that that ink bleeds all the way through it starts little corners here and with, I don't know how long, a few years maybe, that bleed starts to go all the way through. The DBX 100, a beautiful watch. Very expensive to buy nowadays. But I have never come across one of them that hasn't got a severely bled screen. I've not come across them. Let me see if I've got a little bleed screen here. I've got um, second hand screens. Hold on. If I've got any, that is. 
that's two seconds. No, I haven't. Oh, that's a shame. Oh, let me show you something else as well. So, another thing to look out for when you're buying a second hand watch. So we've done the chrome and on there as well. And by the way, look out for corrosion on the metal frames. Corrosion starts from underneath. I don't like touching the chrome ones with my bare fingers. So, on these, for example, all right, this is perfect condition, but the chrome around here starts going corroded. It starts going white and then a powdery effect, and then it starts bubbling up. Once you start getting that, the watch is past it. It's not worth, it's not worth investing your time or money into it. Another thing I look out for as well, when I see the reverse of the watch, if it's got, this is the case back, a lot behind here. By the way, this has got all someone's signature stuff on it. That really devalues the watch. But I've got a case here. If you've got one with a sticker on it, it shows the watch has not been worn very often because the first thing to come off with sweat on your wrist is the sticker. So if it's got the sticker at the back, you know it's not been worn very much. If it's got a sticker at the back and it's got scratches on it, it just means it's been in someone's drawer and they're not really paid attention and it just smacks around for many years. So that could be what the dents and scratches are. But you see the scratches on, on plastic surfaces like this, not the case but the infrared and here, the poly watch, this here, cleans all of it off perfectly. Let me see if I've got one here with a little scratch on it and I can show you. Well, for this one here, for example, the case is not bad, it's okay. This is 1984. But you see the glass here, the, the acrylic, you see it's, it's sort of, Beveled slightly on the edge that's because of the sleeve when the sleeve used to rub on the watch for many many years but the watch condition is okay not perfect far from it another thing to look out for is the lugs so that's the first thing I look out for first when the watch is reversed on the pictures I look out for lugs now when the lugs I'm going to look for one here I should show you so because they've been worn quite a few times. Just want to find one here. And the straps have been changed over and over again. You're going to start getting a lot of wear on these lugs. Let me zoom in. You're going to start getting a lot of wear because some people, when people put the pins in, they clip them through like this instead of pushing them down and back in they just push it because they ain't got the correct tools so this one here is broken once the lugs are broken there's nothing you can do but you don't i don't tend to buy them when, when they're bitty like this this side ain't too bad let me see if i've got another one in here to show you So look, this one here, for example, broken completely off. It's because they've been snapping it in. Snap, 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 out it goes and it, and it weakens the lug. And once these break, they're useless. There's another one here. CMD40s again. They just break. The condition of that, terrible. Yeah, so that's what I look out for. What else can I look out for? Oh, um, yeah, so let's take this one here, for example. So, this one here is in nice condition. There is a few marks on the screen. It's in nice condition, but what, you, and it's, what year is this? I can't remember now. Just say 1990. This thing is late 80s, very early 90s, maybe 1990. This hasn't got the original straps on. 
it's got aftermarket generic straps. I don't even think they're Casio, they're not. But to buy the original strap for this, if you can buy it, will cost you 30, 40 pounds, 50 dollars. So you gotta, if you want the complete originality, you gotta think if the watch is 150, now the strap, now we're up to 200. So you gotta look at it that way. Sometimes when you when you see a nice watch and it's all original, it's worth paying that little bit extra or a lot extra. Depends how bad you want it because they're very here and far between. Like this one's in really good condition. It's hardly been used, but the straps perish. So any watch, any any watch like this generation in the 80s that had a plastic resin case and has straps will always snap. I've seen them far too much. And when you've got as much old Casio as I have, it's like constantly changing straps. Very annoying. So I've got to have spares. So I have a ton of spares for all my watches. So for example, the um, AE20, I've got all these spare straps. because they're not gonna sell them anymore. They don't produce these anymore. So when I find them, and the price has gotta be okay, I mean, you'd be looking to spend 30, 40 pounds a piece for these straps. But it's the straps that make the watch, the original watch. And it's what holds its value as well. So if you've got in excellent condition, the screen is perfect, the back lugs are perfect and if you fit the original strap on let me show you let me show you i feel like touching my watches with my bare fingers but i shall show you on this one so for example um so this one here the ae21 these are the straps that go onto them they don't make these anymore. This is a 1988 watch. They don't make these anymore and they definitely don't make the red one. Very hard to find that is. But I know if I put the strap on it, it really increases the value of the watch because it looks complete. Especially if you've got some nice Casio boxes to put them in as well. Let me... So you've got a nice box like this. with the blue. Yeah, so I look for um, I look for stuff like that and I've got lots of spares, like I've got um, for the CMD40, I've got all the springs, I've got the rubber seals, I've got all the screws. This is original stuff. Um, I've got aftermarket straps, they're not original, but they're almost the same, I shall show you them. these are them the only drawback is they haven't got Casio written on there but you could so if your strap broke here you could just take that that clasp and put it on there yeah um yeah that's what I look out for I don't, I don't think there's anything else to say and um, I try to look out for as well manuals so if you've got the original manual with the botch with the watch and the original box I look at all that as going towards the value. Um, yeah. Um, I don't really worry about the internal parts because all the internal parts you could replace. But what you can't replace in a lot of the time is the casing. Sometimes the straps. But if you find good straps, buy them. If, you, if you're a good collector. So summed it up we're trying to find the lcd screen um we look out for the lcd screen tilt it to make sure it's the genuine model if we're still unsure we check out the screws make sure the plus and the whole line um if you want to find out the usage we look out for the stick out the back um we look out for the lines around the watch and make sure they're not worn down 
um, and make sure the functionality is all working. Um, you're going to get a lot of them sometimes with a button sticking, but that's not an issue. You can just take it apart, clean it. It could just be a bit of grime in there or they've just never been pushed in far enough. Um, and we also looked at the chrome watches for corrosion and bleeding on the screen, which is very, very common bleeding on the screen. All right, hope you found that useful. If any comments or if you've got suggestions, hit them below. I'll answer every comment, by the way. Cheers.